thank you, everyone. Uh, I am on the design research team at the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about a research project that my team did on behalf of the Wikimedia Foundation web team. The web team, as we will see, was very interested in hearing from people who read uh, English, French, Swahili, and Yoruba Wikipedia as people who live in Sub-Saharan Africa and read those perspectives. Next slide, please. So yeah, just briefly here, we are going to be talking about a research project that involves surveys, that involves interviews. If you get access to these slides, which are, uh, I believe people will, you can follow this link to find a full report on Commons that is much longer and more detailed than what we'll be able to talk about here. You can also find it just by searching for the name of this presentation on Commons. You can find it in my uploads. Uh, it, it is on Commons. And throughout this presentation today, we are going to essentially be talking about a research project, but also thinking about how do product teams in the Wikimedia Foundation use research, design research, the kind of work that my team does to inform product development, essentially, to make their products more useful, more accessible, and uh, essentially provide a better service to communities. Next slide, please. Yeah, and so today, just to set expectations, essentially, we're going to be, I'll be introducing the web team and the design research teams. I'll talk a little bit about what we were interested in learning. I'll talk about how we did it, basically, with the kinds of actions that we took to find or to yeah, answer the questions that the web team asked us. I'll probably talk about a few of the interesting things that we found that I think this audience is going to be interested in. And then finally, we'll close out by talking about what the web team is doing with all this information. Uh, over here on this side of the slide, you can see a screenshot of the original report. You'll see this word uh, UCS all over the place. This is a Senegal-based design research agency that we partner with uh, quite frequently in the Design Research Team Foundation. Um, and they, they essentially helped us facilitate this research. Next slide, please. Next. Oh, yeah, there we go. So yeah, here we are. This is the Design Research Team. This is where I work. Um, we, there's not that many of us. We've actually even lost one person since uh, the screenshot was taken. But essentially, uh, product teams in the Wikimedia Foundation come to us and they ask us questions. How does this project, or how does this tool work? Uh, we heard in this room about edit check yesterday. For example, the editing team might want to know, what does a new user think when they see edit check for the very first time? What does a very experienced user think when we show them edit check and we ask them about their community and how they work in their community? So we answer those kinds of questions. Next slide, please. And this is the Wikimedia Foundation web team. Uh, they are sorry that they couldn't be here to present in person today. I'm very happy to be speaking on their behalf. Um, and yeah, here they are, some of them even uh, personally pictured. Next slide, please. What does the web team do at the Wikimedia Foundation? Basically, if you're on Wikipedia and you're not using the app, you are in the domain of work of the web team. That is what the web team works on. They are, uh, they are basically take care of the desktop interface and the mobile web interface. They're interested in increasing global readership, making the wikis more welcoming, more accessible, making them more engaging. And over here on the right hand side of the slide, you can see some of the specific areas of work that the web team is involved in. Uh, the reading experience, uh, maintenance of mobile front end, search engine optimization, and more. So if you're on Wikipedia and you're not on the app, uh, in some sense you are looking at the work of the uh, web team. Next slide, please. Okay, so what was the web team interested in finding out? Uh, they came to us in the design research team with a bunch of questions. Uh, they wanted to know, how are readers moving around the site? When you're on Wikipedia and you go from one article to, an, to the next article, how does that process work? Uh, what are you doing to actually move around? We wanted to know, or they wanted to know, what do readers think that they're doing? So if I'm in an interview with you and I see you go from this article to the next one to the next, I want to hear you explain to me in your words what it is that you're doing. That helps us to understand, essentially, how you think about, how you think about what it is that you're doing. Um, the web team was interested in knowing what kinds of things people like to read. Uh, they wanted to know why people are reading Wikipedia and what are the challenges that they encounter. And specifically, 
They wanted to know all these questions or answer these questions in Sub-Saharan Africa, a, a market, a region that many teams in the Wood Media Foundation are, are showing increased uh, interest and attention to, and that is essentially where this project is from. Next slide, please. Okay, next slide. So, in answering these questions, how did we do it? Well, um, this, what we see here, these four stages of research, this is uh, quite common for work that my team, the design research team does for the Wood Community Foundation. We do a lot of interviews, we do a lot of surveys, um, and we do them at different scales. Many of my projects are quite small. I consider this one to be quite large, actually. So we started out uh, inside the foundation asking people who do thinking about readers, people who have experience with these questions, uh, what do you think about this? We're going to do this project. Can you point us in the direction of uh, other research, other other findings and insights that might get helpful for us? We conducted a total of 32 uh, interviews with readers of French, Swahili, English, and Yorba Wikipedias. We did a handful of them first, then we did a big survey of readers from those languages, and then we finished with more interviews, essentially, on the basis of what we found in the survey. And then finally, we made a report much of, or some of which you will be seeing today in the form of these uh, slides. Uh, so who did we talk to? This slide is specifically showing us the people that we talked to in the form of interviews. Uh, as you can see, we talked to eight people from each of these languages. They were drawn from a number of different uh, countries. English readers, for example, were primarily uh, Nigerians and Kenyans, the ones that we spoke to uh, directly in interviews. Swahili readers it were obscured a little bit, but mostly from uh, Kenya. Yoruba readers from Nigeria and French readers from, from West Africa, Côte uh, d'Ivoire, and Senegal. Um, so yeah, people were, were essentially, we spoke to people from all over the continent and people who read a bunch of different languages. Next slide, please. So at this point, I'm going to show us a couple of interesting things that came out of the survey. Again, the, uh, the full report is quite long, it is quite detailed, I encourage you to check it out in comments. I'm just talking about some of the highlights here, obviously because of uh, time considerations. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. So, uh, yeah, you can. So on the previous slide, we looked at the interviews, the people we spoke to in the interviews. On this slide, we're looking at people who responded to our survey. Again, as you can see, uh, readers were, were located in a number of sub Saharan African countries. And over here, I just want to point out the fact that most of the readers who responded to the survey, so the next five or so slides we're going to see, we are looking at people who responded to the survey. Most of them were from English and French. It was actually, believe it or not, it was quite a bit easier for us to locate people to survey who are preferential readers to English and French than Swahili and Yoruba. And for that reason, in a couple of the next slides, I think I'm going to be reminding us that I think when we see graphs and stuff, it's best for us to compare English and French to each other. It's the you know, same number of respondents, essentially. Next slide, please. So we asked people all kinds of questions in the survey. One of the questions was, why do you visit Wikipedia? And when we group all languages together, uh, we see that, yeah, okay, I'm seeing a bunch of reasons here that kind of make sense. Many of these reasons are the reasons that people think about uh, inside of the Wikimedia Foundation when they're in product development. So learning more about a current event, uh, school-related assignments, work-related assignments, Basically, reasons for visiting that include information retrieval. I, I want a piece of information, I go to Wikipedia to get it. Next slide, please. When we break these like motivations, or reading motivations, or visit reasons down by country, or excuse me, by language Wikipedia forever, however, we can start to see some differences. And I want to call our attention just to these two reasons in the middle. And again, I think we should be comparing blue English with red French. I, I think comparing the blue line to the red line in this graph is what we essentially want to be doing. And in fact, we see uh, when we ask people, you know, do you go there to find a specific fact about a topic? Uh, the blue line there is a lot higher than the red line. English readers uh, responded that they engage in that behavior much more frequently than people who read French. On the other hand, when we ask people, do you randomly explore out of curiosity or out of boredom? The red line is much higher than the blue line, and we find that uh, people who read French actually respond that they randomly explore more frequently than people who read English. Um, I'm going to save questions for you. 
Yeah, that's possible. Um, yeah, so we do see that when these are broken down by language, there are some differences that start to emerge, things that are telling me that uh, people may be using these different Wikipedias for different reasons. So I think at this point, I'm comfortable saying that. Next slide, please. We also ask people, how do you read Wikipedia? Again, among many other questions, the full, they're found in the full report. Uh, but again, these reading styles, these are reading styles that people inside of the uh, design research team, the web team, other people in the foundation kind of came up with. These are reading styles we think about, skimming, scamming, scanning, reading things in depth, reading section to section. These are different ways that someone can use a Wikipedia article. And indeed, we see that some of them are reported more frequently than others. Next slide, please. Now, again, when we break these down by language, uh, we see, for example, this uh, uh, use case, or the, sorry, this navigation or reading strategy on the far left. I skim through articles to get general information about a topic. Again, we're seeing a bit of a difference between English and French here with French readers who also reported that they like to randomly explore are now uh, scanning for general information. I'm going to move us, let's move forward two more in the interest of time. Okay. Uh, and here, uh, towards the end here, we started, at, or, sorry, towards the end of this uh, survey section, we asked people as well, what, what do you want out of a Wikipedia article? What do you want that you don't have? Uh, possibly what you use on other sites that you don't have in Wikipedia. And we see, again, uh, there, is, there are varying levels of interest in different features uh, of Wikipedia articles. And we noticed you know, almost 50% of our survey respondents across all languages are interested in things like a feed that allows you to find new content, recommended articles based on a topic that you subscribe to, reading lists. These are the kinds of features that many product teams and web information are, are interested in exploring right now. And indeed, I think we're seeing that uh, at least among the people that responded to this survey, there's uh, some interest in it. Slide, please. OK, so now, yeah, in the interest of time, I'm going to keep us moving. Uh, we looked at some of the findings from the survey. Now I'm going to turn our attention to some of the findings from these interviews. I mentioned we spoke to 32 readers, eight per language, English, French, Swahili, and Yoruba. And I'm going to highlight just a couple of the interesting trends that I think the people here might be interested in. Um, when we spoke to readers, um, you know, obviously responding to a survey is one thing. When you're in an interview, you can go much more in depth. You can ask people, why did you respond that way? Please walk me through it. Tell me about your experience, et cetera. And throughout these 32 interviews, we started to see some patterns. Um, first, I'm going to be focusing on the headlines. At least the first one of the reading session. Typically, they arrive there after a search engine. Using a search engine, typically that is Google. So this was very, you know, this was not surprising. Um, we heard from many people who told us that Wikipedia is part of their knowledge ecosystem. For most of the people that we heard from, Wikipedia is not their only source of information. They have many sources of information, including news, um, uh, social media, uh, friends and family, um, the radio. Wikipedia is part of a much larger ecosystem, and people use it for specific reasons. That is what we heard. Uh, we also heard from these interviews that people who go to Wikipedia for different reasons use Wikipedia in different ways. For example, if uh, I, or uh, I guess I can talk about our interview participants, our interview participants who go to Wikipedia for a school assignment or a work assignment, uh, people who like to read long articles for fun, those people read in depth. They go from section to section. They read from top to bottom. Uh, other people, and many of our respondents from the uh, English survey uh, indicated this in, as well in a different way, many people go to Wikipedia because they want a specific piece of information. They go to the article. They open it. They read quickly. They skim or they scan until they find what they want, and then they are out of there. Thank you, Wikipedia. I have what I want, and I'm moving on. Um, interestingly for us as well, we always ask people, if, and yeah, I basically ask people in every interview, uh, do you have a Wikipedia app? It's very common for me to hear, there's an app. Uh, that is, that's a very common response to uh, a reader being asked that question. In these interviews, actually, the group that had downloaded the app 
most frequently were the Yoruba readers that we spoke to these interviews. And the, when we asked them, why did you download the app? Uh, what we heard from multiple interview respondents was, I read everything that I that was related to what I was interested in Yorba. I thought if I downloaded the app, I would get more content. Uh, people thought that they were so they might be able to unlock more content in Yorba, that they would get more access to more content, and that's why they downloaded the app. Many of these people no longer use the Wikipedia app, but they have downloaded it in the past. Next slide, please. Uh, when, when talking to readers about how they move around when they're on the site, um, people were very uh, willing and very ready to, thank you, very willing and ready to tell us that they use the table of contents. Uh, they know what it is, they use it, they want to go to a specific part of the article, they click on it. Um, we also found that people use the blue links very widely to, to navigate between sites. We did not hear that a lot of people use the search bar. We hear that they click from article to article using blue links. We found that small language Wikipedia readers, they said that they're looking for different things. The readers of Swahili and Yoruba that we spoke to were much more likely to tell us that when they go to those Wikipedias, they are looking for things specifically related to their local culture, their local language, their local context. Readers of English and French were typically looking for things uh, related to a, a broader language context. And um, finally, the, the readers of English and French tended to basically know more about how Wikipedia works in these interviews. Uh, they tended to be more knowledgeable about where information comes from, what Wikipedia is, uh, and how it works. And then finally for this section, uh, a couple of the difficulties that we heard about when speaking to readers. Uh, first and foremost, Swahili and Yoruba Wikipedias uh, our interview participants would tell us that there's not enough content, that they're looking for more, that they have exhausted what they are interested in and they want more content to read. Um, we also found that readers are not very aware of all of the different navigational tools on Wiki. Like I said, very few people use the search bar, at least from the ones that we spoke to uh, or heard from in this research. Uh, we found that people are very interested in interactivity, visual content, audio content, videos, images, diagrams, that sort of thing. And this is also related to another challenge, which is that in English and French, sometimes the articles are very long. People have uh, difficulty finding specific things within those uh, articles, and the very long, very text-heavy articles are quite simply often difficult and tedious to work with for readers of the larger language. Okay. At this point, I'm going to highlight just two interesting use cases or, or reader motivations that emerge from these interviews, and then I'm going to conclude by, by telling us where the web team is going with this. Um, when we spoke to readers of Yorba and Swahili specifically, we started to hear things that were, uh, I think you could say, out of line with the way people, the way many product teams inside of the foundation uh, typically think about how people use Wikipedia. These were somewhat surprising findings, uh, for me at least. For example, in Yorba, we heard from many people who said, yes, I go to Yorba Wikipedia all the time, and I go there because I live with someone who doesn't use the internet, or I live with someone who uh, has limited literacy, or I live with someone who doesn't read English or French or understand English or French. So I go there specifically to access content for them. Uh, maybe you are. Maybe these people are reading um, folklore or local history or local literature, for example, articles to their relatives. Maybe they're helping relatives with some sort of information retrieval. But for Yoruba and Swahili, we found many of our interview participants explaining that they're essentially using Wikipedia on behalf of someone close to them. And that, is, for me, that was kind of a revelation and was a yeah, very interesting a new way to think about uh, Wikipedia's value and Wikipedia's role in society. Uh, let's go ahead and two slides. We also heard from uh, specifically readers of Swahili that Wikipedia plays an important role in various, um, yeah, various functions that I think we could refer to as uh, language activism. So, for example, 
I've heard through conversations here at Wikimedia Java and previously to this event, um, specifically when speaking to people who, who use Swahili Wikipedia, that kind of the center of gravity of editing in Swahili, and feel free to correct me in the questions, the center of gravity in Swahili is centered mostly in Tanzania. And this makes sense because in Tanzania, education exists in the Swahili language from, from a fairly early age all the way through college. And so passing through Tanzanian education simply gives someone access to very formal levels of written Swahili. And that is the style of language that's used in Swahili Wikipedia. We heard, for example, from a Kenyan journalist who writes in Swahili, who said that I use Swahili Wikipedia because uh, I have to write, uh, for example, I had to write an article about microwaves in Swahili. So I went to Swahili Wikipedia to learn how to express myself about microwaves. So Swahili Wikipedia in this case is serving a use, not necessarily for information, but as a almost a language resource, a language repository. We are seeing that these small and medium-sized Wikipedias are valuable as a collection of texts in a given language, rather than, well, I mean, in addition to the informational content, um, the linguistic content and the cultural content is uh, uh, also equally, if not more important. At this point, I'm going to have to skip this through a couple slides. So let's keep going, maybe another four. Keep going a little more. OK. Uh, I'm wrapping up here in the interest of time. Let's see if we go for one more. Yes. All right. In the interest of time, I'm wrapping up here. And I'm going to conclude by talking about where all this fits in the thinking of the web team. Again, as I mentioned, the web team is, uh, they, they take care of the desktop site and the mobile website. They want readers to be engaged. They want readers to be interested. They want readers to participate and to know uh, what they're reading and to know how much they can trust what they're reading. So in this case, um, the web team essentially took away from this readers that, uh, from this research that there's a lot of people that go to Wikipedia for something quick. They want to skim, they want to scan, they want to get a piece of information, and they want to move on with their day or with their lives, essentially. And the web team's takeaway from this is that they should continue their work to optimize typography and readability, uh, which means that they should continue their work on uh, essentially helping us figure out what is the best size font, what is the best font, what is the uh, best amount of distance between lines in an article to make something easier to read quickly. Next slide, please. And uh, in this direction, the web team is uh, working on a couple of ideas uh, here. First, they're going to allow readers to uh, select default reading settings here. These are, again, these are optimized for readability. We want people to be able to pick the setting that is easiest for them to read. Uh, the web team is interest, interested in exploring what is the best default font size on every Wikipedia, or at least on the largest Wikipedias. Uh, what is the best default font size? What is the best default font? What, what helps people read quickly in these various use cases that we've been hearing about? And finally, they're interested in improving readability by allowing people access to dark mode. Uh, this is already available in the apps. Web team's interested in expanding this to the desktop and mobile websites. Thank you. And finally here, what did the, this is a little obscure, but what did the web team learn about reader needs? What do readers want? What do readers say that they need that they don't have? Well, we found that uh, there are some people that want a specific fact. They want to quickly access their information and move on. There's also people that like to read in depth. If you, are in, if you go to Wikipedia for fun, you're trying to fall asleep, you read historical or biographical articles, you're reading uh, from top to bottom, you're reading long things. Currently, it's not super easy to do that kind of reading, and it's not easy to find other articles in the same topic. People rely on blue links, but as we know, blue links are not distributed equally. They're not necessarily put to help people find related articles. Uh, they're somewhat random and, and subject to the, uh, essentially the whims of the individual editors who added them. And so the web team thinks maybe, as we saw earlier, about 50% of the people who responded to the survey said they want some kind of recommended article feed, they want a reading list uh, option, some way to find new content in their topic. The web team thinks all this is related. So 
final slide. What are, where are they going with this? Here we have some very early ideas uh, that will allow people to explore within a topic, to browse within a topic and find relevant uh, other relevant articles within an area of interest. These are some very early ideas. Um, in this vein, you can see different cards on the desktop's uh, reading site, um, you know, top red, photo of the day, uh, up here with a Picasso article. Again, we have some, some customization options and discovery options. These are the kinds of things that the web team is working on uh, as we move forward. And yeah, that's it. The last thing I'll say is thank you for your patience. I know I've been going quickly through this. There's a lot of text. So I guess the message I'd like to leave you with is, this is kind of what I do in the design research team. This is what we do in design research in the foundation. The product teams ask us questions like this. How are people using our tools? How can we improve them? How can we design better tools for use cases that are coming in the future? Um, and uh, yeah, I was very pleased to work on this. And thank you very much for uh, allowing me to present. Thank you, Jeff. Yes. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, Okay. Do we oh, have time for no, just one. We only take only one question. We only have one minute for, for the next session. Okay. Make a good one. Yes. Um, so, did you, did you control, like, when you said a theme that the search for the French and English had different uses for media, did you compare this? Like, the discussion was African based, right? Yes, can you compare this with European and North American readers to see if like, it was a language thing, a cultural thing, a regional thing? Yes, it's going to require a, another effort, essentially. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm only comparing people that to each other that were collected within this survey. Yeah, and then the region is mostly mobile based, but did you control for that in your uh, interviewees? Like, yeah, we. There's we, a lot of things you propose up for desktop. Yes, yeah, yeah, and, and that's it, it's desktop and mobile, mobile, mobile web as well. So those yeah, yeah, exactly. So the web team works on desktop and mobile web, essentially. So, uh, yeah, the things that they're working on are intended for both. We did collect, like, uh, modality preference in the survey. It's not included in this deck. Uh, I'd have to, it might be in the full deck. Um, and I'm happy to look into it more. Uh, but, yeah, the web team is intending to provide these features for people on desktop and mobile web. Uh, yeah, we, reserve, we can take more questions because there's no session before the tea, the tea, the tea break, so. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Go ahead. Yes, please. Okay, uh, thank you so much for the amazing presentation. Um, I joined the late, but I was trying to understand. Because, yeah. um, I'm just asking from a point of uh, someone who has been doing, uh, doing the research mm -hmm. on needs um, assessment, not yes. the ethics. Yeah. So there are three things I want to know about this research. Sure. Um, first of all, it, the idea of this research came from what? Okay. And the second, um, I want to learn from you. Okay, that's what I'm asking. Uh, what was the methodology? And then the third. Do you, do you probably have an implementation part maybe after identifying Maybe is this things like identifying gaps in, in readers or African languages? And then if there is this such result, do you probably I just some more. Yeah. I hope I hope I hope you had you I will try to raise my phone. No, it's for the Zoom. Oh, okay, sorry. So um the third. The method is, do you probably have an implementation phase of the findings of the results of this research? And if you have it, how is it going, like, how are you going to approach it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Of course. Thank you very much for those questions. I'm just, uh, I guess, rephrase, 
you know, uh, summarizing what the questions were. Where did the research request come from? Why did we do it? How did we do it? Methodology. And third of all, where are we going with it? What's the implementation? Right. Okay. So, uh, yeah, where did this request come from? Like many uh, product teams in the Wikimedia Foundation, the web team uh, has a general desire to know more about how their tools are used and more about how, how, how people around the world read Wikipedia so that they can improve their tools that they're working on in the future. In this case, uh, they actually is, oh, it's over here. Yeah, I'll, um, I, I'll just move this around here if that's all right. Yeah, in this case, the web team, they had these questions here, basically. They asked these questions because they, these are the questions that they have about what readers do on the platform and specifically when interacting with their tools and their, their features, basically. This is, these questions I think represent pretty well the, the way that the web team thinks about readers who use Wikipedia on desktop and mobile. So these are the, the issues that they're interested in. As to why we uh, focused on Sub-Saharan Africa, as I mentioned, uh, it is a market of a, you know, a great deal of interest for a number of uh, product teams in the uh, Wikimedia Foundation. There are, as we've heard throughout this conference today, the, the Wikipedias associated with Sub-Saharan Africa are growing very quickly. Um, there's a lot of uh, activity and the foundation as a whole is very interested in knowing more about about how um, Wikipedia is being used here so that this process of growth and development can be better supported. That's where the question came from. Is, how is that for uh, answer to question number one? Okay. As far as methodology, this is, again, it, uh, as I mentioned, there's more detail in the full deck, but this is like a very rough overview of the four things we did. First, background research, and that mostly honestly consisted with talking to people in the foundation. There's a lot of product teams. There's a lot of people not on product teams. A lot of people in the foundation have done a lot of thinking for a lot of time about readers in reading Wikipedia. So we started by doing consultations. Hey, we're thinking about this uh, project. What do you think? Anything come to mind for you? What kinds of questions do you have on your team about readers in this market? Um, that kind of thing. Uh, and that actually did open up a bunch of new areas that we had not been uh, considering to ask about. Uh, in the research, we did it, um, I guess you could call this like a mixed methods thing. So we started with a handful of exploratory interviews. Okay, you read Wikipedia in this language, tell me more about that. You know, a very open, very open-ended, um, uh, whatever comes to mind, just, you know, continue talking and you know, asking follow-up questions, but very exploratory. We learned very interesting and unexpected things from that. Um, we used those findings from, from those two phases to move into the survey. The survey, again, we asked people from all of the foundation, what do you, we have these, this list of questions. What do you think? Are we missing anything? Okay. Uh, oh, that, well, then it started to get long. So then we had to prioritize and start um, cutting stuff out and make it shorter. We ended up with a survey, give it to a bunch of people. After the survey, we looked at the results. This is what we found. This is really interesting. This is unexpected. Why are people saying this in English, but they're saying something completely different in French? What's going on with that? And we used that to move into the final round of interviews, basically. And those were much more structured. At that point, we kind of knew what we were looking for, and we did more of them. And uh, that allowed us, to, that structure in the final interviews allowed us to kind of zero in on some of the themes I think <laughs> that, that we got to speak about today. Okay. All right. Uh, I, okay, very, very quickly. The last one is, is what we have here at the end of the slide. Where are we now? The web team is working on stuff like this on the basis of this research. It, was encur it has encouraged them to move forward with interactivity, engagement, accessibility, and that kind of thing. Thank you.